When you were in elementary school, were you taught that the tongue was divided into a map of sections? Like certain parts of the tongue were used for tasting different uh, things. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a familiar. tongue map. Yeah, that like your side tastes the sour yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually been proved to be false. Of course. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. It, like thinking about the tongue functioning and just the way you eat, like. I don't think you, what are you doing? <laughs> Grace is just sticking her <laughs> tongue out. Welcome back to the Random Theory Podcast family. Hello. Hope your ears are doing well today. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully they're doing swell. Uh, we've had an interesting kind of couple weeks. I was yeah. in <laughs> When did, when, okay. <laughs> you know, these podcasts, we try, you know, they come out once a week. Yeah. But they are not recorded in a normal fashion. I don't. When was the last time we recorded a podcast? Like two weeks ago. I two think. or three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. And we were, it was a batch recording because we went out of town. Yeah, we recorded too because you were going to. I went to California. Yeah, I went to New York. Yeah, opposite ends <laughs> of the country. <laughs> we're like, we gotta get away from one another. Oh gosh, cannot do this right now. Yeah. Yeah. So we've had a couple interesting weeks. It's been, you know, and also I didn't think about this because you were telling me your travel adventures. Uh huh. But I and I also had terrible travel getting to California. You did. That's right. Because we sat in traffic. We drove to Southern California and sat in traffic. It turned a nine-hour drive into a thirteen-hour drive. That is awful. So I would have yeah. been very angry. I was. Sitting in a I car. was definitely not uh, having a great time. I'm sure. But you know, it was okay. Yeah, I had a whole fiasco getting back here. My travel journey started at like three in the morning. Um. The day before. Oh, my God. So, like, on Monday at 3 a.m., I woke up, went to JFK. We sat on the tarmac for an hour because there was a giant storm. So in New York. In New York, yes. Went to Atlanta. I missed my connection in Atlanta. That was a whole fiasco, getting on the next flight. Yeah. I was, like, on standby waiting for them to load me onto this plane. There's one seat left, and it is literally... <laughs> everything but the toilet with a seatbelt. You're, you're, you're <laughs> like, on the wing. You're sitting I, out. Dude. So I finally get to uh, Houston, which was where I was doing a photo you were doing shoot. A, you were doing a little stopover in Houston. Yeah, I was doing a stopover in Houston because I had a photo shoot. Yeah. So finally, like Atlanta to Houston, I'm late at this point for my photo shoot. So I don't <laughs> even like, I have a 50 pound bag with me yeah. in baggage claim and I just leave the bag. Left I didn't bag. even think about it. I just like went to my photo shoot and was like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, this like the is bag what, will be fine. Yeah, the bag, like, screw it. Like, yeah. whatever. I will get it eventually. So do my photo shoot. Everything's great. Come back to the airport. My baggage tag on my suitcase, like, did not match where I was going yeah. at this point. So I finish the photo shoot, get back. The bag, I like, I go to baggage claim to try to find it. Can't find it anywhere. Sure. Keep in mind, like, this was my final destination it for the bag. It should have been there. Yes, it was on yeah. my bag tag. That, like, this was my final. Yeah. Like, didn't matter. This was it. Yeah. I go to baggage claim and I'm talking to the lady and I'm like, yeah, my bag should be here. She's like, yeah, we've lost like four bags today. And I was like, sure. great. Mine cool. is probably one of them. Yeah. Anyway, I have no idea where my bag is at this point. She calls downstairs and is like, hey, is this bag with the Salt Lake stuff? And they're like, yeah, it's right here. Like I'm looking at it. It's right here. And <laughs> she just looks at me. She's like, it's down there. Do you want it? And I was wow. like, no, just keep it down there. Like it's fine. Whatever. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is when the story takes a real fun right turn. Right. I get on the plane to Salt Lake. To Salt Lake. Yes, yes. I'm in Houston. At you this are point. finally going back. I am home. going home. Yeah. I am so excited. You got the bag. It was yeah. running down the runway, but they <laughs> captured it, put it in a plane, and you're going home. I'm going home. Yeah. Get on the plane. My seat gets upgraded to first class, which nice. Not going to complain. Pretty nice. Thank you, Delta. Yeah. So I'm sitting in first class, not complaining. Life is great. They feed me dinner. I go to sleep. Nice. At this point, because I'm exhausted. I've been traveling since 3 a.m. Yeah. So we get to Salt Lake. And I had a movie on that was long enough that should have been over when we landed. Mm. It was still like it was in like we were up in the air still as the credits were rolling. And I was right. like, huh, this doesn't feel right. Hey, wait, hang on. That doesn't add up. No. All of a sudden, we're headed. We're V-lining for Las Vegas. Sure. Like I get this notification on my phone. And it just says IAH, which is where I was, mm -hmm. Salt Lake, Las Vegas. 
Never a good time. <laughs> it just decided we're going to Las Vegas. The so, plane was like, I got some money. I need to burn it. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So the pilot gets on and he was like, hey, we've been circling above Salt Lake for 45 minutes. There's a terrible windstorm. We literally can't land the plane because we're so low on fuel. So if we have to bail, there's no way we'll get up back off the ground. <laughs> I was like, "Jeez, <laughs> okay. So we go to Las Vegas, fill back up, and then come back to Salt Lake. Oh, my god! I was like, I'm going to get in at 9 p.m. tonight. Nah. I'm going to get back. I'm going to unpack. I'm going to be ready to film podcasts, film videos today. It's going to be great. No, my butt is in bed at like 3, 4 a.m. Yeah. Because we're also, keep in mind, in Salt Lake, we're getting an Uber at 2 a.m. is not a thing. Yeah, you were getting an Uber from the airport to get home. Yeah. And that's just, that doesn't exist. In that does not exist here. That doesn't exist. So anyway, that is my travel. That is what's been up the past that's 24 been, that hours. Was, that, yeah, that was literally tw- like t- yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. It was fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Thank you for... In- Long story. Yeah. I saw a comment. <laughs> I don't I don't want to call this person out in like a rude way, but I did see a comment on YouTube that was like, uh, six minutes in, they haven't even got to the topic yet. You know what? We have things to share with you about life. Listen, that are important. we're just <laughs> yeah, like we're just talking. If you don't want to hear it, you can just skip right ahead to that topic. That's fine too. Yeah, you know, unless you want to hang out and hear about my wild. Unless adventures. you want to hear about you know Grace's magical bag floating through <laughs> TSA somehow. I don't know how it got there yeah. or what was happening, but know. it all happened. It all worked out. <laughs> we got there in the end. <laughs> we got there in the end. That's what happens. We always get there in the end. Ooh, so let's get there now, shall we, with some ratings? Yeah, let's, well, well, yeah, we're not getting to the topic just yet. Keep skipping if you're skipping to that. So to our homies and the ratings and reviews that have... Yeah. These are coming from Apple Podcasts. Yes, if you want to be read on here leave a rating and drop review. a big rating and review i chose this one because it says lover weather that's who it's by lover weather lover weather it felt nice that's why i had to tell the whole story so the i the weather yes about yeah. the weather that i was enduring so i could read yeah. lover weather's lover weather comment sure uh so they said great podcast hey love this podcast it's short and informative it's also my favorite and they left a knock knock joke i love that they right. say it's informative it's informative about my life and my travels sure, so yeah. thank you <laughs> also and we've just devolved to all knock knock jokes yes. thank you everyone i really appreciate it <laughs> okay so knock knock who's there okay okay who hey buddy absolute zero is no joking matter I feel like I might be too dumb for that joke. Well, they use zeros for the okay. Okay. And then they said, if you could talk about dark matter or something. Oh, gosh. Okay. So that's that's interesting. So this person is very intelligent. This person is way smarter than we are. (laughs) Yeah. That's going over my head. This joke does not. I don't know. It's not hitting me. We are two monkeys in trench coats and you are probably like an actual person. Yes. And literally the the podcast I have pulled up down on the bottom is... Did dinosaurs fart? So <laughs> clearly, we are people of culture. <laughs> we are so cultured; it's yeah. insane. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> I hope there's people out there that that joke really hit for them, though. I hope someone got it, and if you did, please explain it in a comment and rating. Yeah, review. I might have to look that up later because that I don't know. Okay, I've got one here. It's another knock knock joke. I'm just going in order. So if you if you left one and you're waiting, don't worry, we'll get to it. Promise. Um, I'm just going up in order, so we'll get there. But this one comes from Goose Flurkin. Goose, Goose Flurkin. <laughs> Goose Flurkin. They said, "Knock, knock. Who's there? Luke. Luke who? Look through the people and find out." <laughs> I feel like that that needs to be said with like a like a similar accent to Goose Flurkin. Goose Flurkin. Look through the people to find out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's so good. Thank you, Goose Flurkin. Thank you, Goose Flurkin. Thank you, uh, everyone <laughs> who's left ratings and reviews. They really help out the show. Yeah. If you want to, screenshot the podcast you're listening to, throw yeah. it up on your Instagram in a story, yeah. tag um, myself, which is sure. at Grace Derek, and sure. the at Random Theory Podcast. Yeah. Um, we would love to see what parts of the podcast you enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, and tell your friends to listen to the ridiculousness that is the random theory podcast yeah also last week i know we discussed um if you have a t- podcast topic you want to hear yeah leave it in a rating or review or a comment on youtube if you're watching um and we talked about just doing emojis and, yes. and we have to like decipher and decide what the podcast is about based on your emojis i think that would be so much fun um i think i did see one on youtube did you you know it's hard to say because okay. it, it was like 
you know, just some emojis. But I assume sure. that's what it was. Sure. So if you want to do that, definitely drop drop that rating and review for it. All right. What the heck are taste buds? Okay, we're getting into it. We're getting into it. If you were skipping along, here here it is. We're talking about taste buds today. Taste buds. Okay, I did not know taste buds were this intense. Okay. They are funky little critters. They are definitely funky little critters. They are weird. Mm -hmm. They are a sensory organ. Sure. They're on your tongue. Yeah. They allow you to experience taste like sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Yeah. And once you figure out how they work, it's really crazy. Okay, I'm excited. So all these bumps on your tongue are called the popoli, yeah. and most of them contain taste buds, but not all of them do. Oh. So these bumps are also present in like different parts of your mouth, like the soft palate, like the roof of your mouth, which oh, is called yeah. your soft palate, okay. and then also in your throat. Oh. So these bumps are kind of like everywhere. They're all over. The- yes. Okay. So there are actually four types of popoli, and they're categorized by shape. Okay. Which is pretty interesting. So there's the filiform, and this is the most common, and it covers your entire tongue surface, um, and it does not contain taste buds. Okay. So these are just like the random homies just, all over. Just the texture on yeah, your tongue. Yeah, the texture. Okay. Then there are the fungal form, and these are located near the front of the tongue and most common all over the surface of your tongue. They're found mostly at the tip of the tongue and at the edge where they make sure that these areas are especially sensitive to taste. So fungal form papillae not only detect taste, but they also contain sensory cells for touch and temperature. And each papilla contains three to five taste buds. Okay. This entire time, I'm just like running my tongue I along my like the top of my mouth and everything <laughs> on to the next one okay it is the circumvolate <laughs> that feels right so it is located near the back of the tongue by the throat and these are the very large ones so if you're looking in the mirror they're the ones that are raised above the surface more they don't just add texture to the tongue they're just kind of aggressive looking okay <laughs> so every person has about seven to twelve of these circumvolate papillae yes yeah yeah. You have seven to 12 of them. Got it. Okay, so the really big ones, they contain several thousand different taste buds. Oh, okay. So you only have seven to 12 of them, but yep. each one contains way more taste several buds. Several thousand okay. compared to the three to five. That is significant. <laughs> Very. Okay. So these are round, raised, and visible to the naked eye, and they're arranged in the shape of a V in the back of your tongue, and they're shaped this way because they're surrounded by a trench that contains many glands that rinse the taste-producing substances into the sensory cells. Interesting. Yeah. So basically, like, all your saliva comes from, like, the back of your tongue area, yeah. so it's just, like, rinsing those out. And they're all, like, in a trench right next to these glands. Yes. Okay. They like rinse the taste producing substances into the sensory cells. Okay. So if you eat something super salty, it yeah. rinses that salt off yep. into the cells. Yep. Then there's the folate. And this is located on the side of the tongue. It's also seen with the naked eye on the rear edge of the tongue. And there you can see several folds that lie close together. So our tongue is about 20 folate papillae, each of which has several hundred taste buds. Okay. So these are like the scrunchy guys on the side the scr- of your tongue. <laughs> the scrunchy guy, the scrunchy boys on the side. Yeah. So the back of the tongue and the side are really where yeah. the taste buds are they go to action. Are chilling. Yeah. Interesting. It is interesting. I did not realize I mean, yeah, I didn't realize that there wasn't I assumed that every little bump on my tongue was, was a, taste a taste bud. bud. Yeah. I didn't realize that those were actually their own thing. Mm-hmm. Those are just filiforms. Like the guys on the center are just filiforms. Yeah, they're not even taste buds. Yeah. So taste buds have very sensitive microscopic hairs called microvilli. So yeah, your tongue has hair on it. Ugh. Very gross, gross, right? Yeah, really gross. When I read this, I was like, ugh. Yeah. It makes me want to go brush my tongue. Yeah. The taste receptor cell that makes up the taste bud are responsible for sending perceptions of taste to the brain. And these cells regenerate very quickly and have an average lifespan of, get this, only 8 to 12 days. Whoa. Yeah. Short. Short. Very short. Yeah. Which makes sense. You're constantly shoving crap in your mouth. <laughs> like, and burning it. And burning it. Gosh, when you burn your tongue, there's nothing oh, worse. the worst. Yeah. So bad. The worst is when you like get a good bite of hot pizza. Mm-hmm. but burn your mouth yes <laughs> and then the rest of the pizza is just ruined it just has no taste yeah 
The human brain can actually only detect five basic tastes. So there's bitter, salty, sweet, sour, and umami, ah, which is savory. Savory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really interesting that, is interesting that we can only detect the five tastes. We're going to actually dive into that a little bit later talking yeah. about them. But I think it's really gross that our tongue has hair on it. <laughs> that is gross. I mean, I guess they are very microscopic hairs, but still kind of yeah. gross. It is gross. So our taste buds are our true taste organ. They have numerous sensory cells that are in turn connected to many different nerve fibers. Mm. So each of these taste buds, so we have the papillae, then we have taste buds within those. Yeah. And within each taste bud, there are between five to 50 sensory cells. Oh my gosh, we are getting deep. Yeah. I said five, I meant 10. 10 to 50 sensory cells. 10 to cells. 50 cells, yeah. These cells form a capsule that is shaped like a flower bud or an orange inside okay. your taste bud. So imagine an orange, like after you peel like the orange cross open. a section of an orange or? Like the whole or Like the when you take the shell orange. off the orange. Oh, gotcha. That's what it looks like inside. Okay. And then at the tip of that, there is a pore that works as a fluid filled funnel. So this funnel contains thin finger shaped sensory cells that extend and these are called taste hairs. I don't know why, but this whole part, everything is just really disturbing to me. It's kind of... The description of everything is yeah. really just not doing it for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a little gross thinking about it, but it's it also makes sense. Sure. And it's all like, uh, you know, it's all amazing to hear and like think so about, wow, that all works inside my mouth when I put like a Dorito in there. <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, it's, it's very gross, like breaking it all down. It is. It's gross. But there's these, also these proteins on the surface that bind chemicals to the cell for tasting. Oh. So this is where like taste science comes in to gotcha. play. Oh, when people, when you're, you're like hacking to get the best flavor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The adult human tongue contains between 2,000 and 8,000 taste buds. I feel like that's kind of a large range. Right. Which is why there's like super tasters and sub tasters. Oh, is that like people that can taste? What are the, what's the wine? Is it sommelier? So, yeah. 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 People that like tell you what wine to eat with your fish or whatever. Yeah. 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 Whatever you're like really wanting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. So each of those 2,000 to 8,000 taste buds. So when I was doing research on this, the range was so wide. Yeah. Sometimes it was two, sometimes it was five to eight. Okay. I think. They don't really know because who's going to count how many taste buds are on a Feels tongue? like a lot to count. <laughs> I would be like, Five, I'm good. 5,000 taste buds? I would tap out at two. I'd be like, eh, yeah. uh, You definitely have you. at least two. Yeah, you have two. Yeah. I love this next part Okay. because to me it is fascinating. Okay. When you were in elementary school, were you taught that the tongue was divided into a map of sections? Like certain parts of the tongue were used for tasting different things. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a familiar. tongue map. Yeah, that like your side tastes the sour yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's actually been proved to be false. Of course. This has been a new, <laughs> right? Yeah, it makes sense. Shocking. I mean, that's how it goes. Yeah, so there's actually been a new development where they used to think it was divided into sections and different sections responsible for tasting different things, yeah. like the sweet, salty, bitter, and sour. But scientists have recently learned that taste buds are on every part of the tongue and are able to detect every kind of taste quality. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it, like thinking about the tongue functioning and just the way you eat, like... I don't think you, what are you doing? <laughs> Grace is just sticking her <laughs> tongue out. Uh, I don't think you like, if you take a bite of a lemon. I only taste it on my side. Yeah, you're not like, uh, I don't taste anything on the right side, but when I shift it over to the left, woo, really gets me. Yeah. I think definitely some are probably more sensitive than others. Kind of like how we talked about how your sides are more sensitive. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's probably where this was, this idea was coming from where probably. it's like sectioned out, even yeah. though it's not really true. But I feel like you probably, as a human with a tongue that's been using it to eat things for a long time, you probably don't even know, you don't notice that. No, not at all. Like, like you, I'm not going to eat something and be like, I'm only going to eat it like, on this oh, side. Oh, wow. I'm only, the, the middle of my tongue isn't really doing anything today. That's right. weird. Yeah, you don't really notice it. It just happens. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. So this final step in, like you just talked about, perceiving taste yeah. is actually a transfer to the nervous system. So this is done by several cranial nerves. All the information is carried along the cranial nerves to part of the lower section of the brainstem. 
uh, which is pretty interesting that our taste literally goes to the brain stem. Straight to the brain stem. Straight there. It's got, it goes to the shortest point possible. Got a s- direct route. And at that point, there's a split. Some fibers carry taste signals together with signals from other sensory perceptions like pain, temperature, and touch through severe exchange points to consciousness. Mm. Then the other fibers pass over these exchange points of consciousness perception and leads a direct path to the part of the brain that are connected with sensory perception and which are responsible for securing our survival. It's here where the taste signals are combined with different smell signals. Interesting. I wonder, I'm, you know, maybe we dig deep in that, like, yeah. at a future time. But, you know, I was talking about some of the fibers are, are uh, combined with different sensory perceptions, like pain. Mm-hmm. You know, is that where you get that thing? I think it's more common with smell, but where you, like, eat something and you get a memory of, like, something that happened or it takes you back to a certain yeah. feeling or whatever. I wonder if that's how that happens. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the crazy part is, like, it, your tongue can literally be like, I hurt. Yeah. Help. <laughs> like, <laughs> I hurt. <laughs> hurts. Hurt, it hurts. Please. This is too hot. Like yeah. for it to be able to sense that something is too hot, I yeah. think is really crazy. That is cool. That it's like, I, uh, <laughs> I don't like it. I mean, that's like anything, right? You like touch a pan with your hand and it's, it's like, like oh. ah. <laughs> Technically, it's, it's your brain deciphering it that way, right? Like yeah. your hand itself is not like, or your tongue is yeah. not like, oh, this piece of pizza is lighting me on fire. Right. Like, it's just getting lit on fire. And then yeah. your brain's like, whoa, wait, hey, we got a fire down there. Hold on. Yeah, Time s- out, stop, buddy. Stop eating that. So let's talk a little bit about why we even use taste. Okay. Why is it important to humans? Who knows? A bitter pill, sour grates, or sweet nothings. Description of taste are often associated with very strong emotions. Sweet nothings. <laughs> sweet nothings. Good old sweet nothings. <laughs> so like we were talking about earlier where you're like, there's a really strong correlation between like a memory and a taste. Yeah. That actually, that strong linkage between taste with emotions and drive has to do with our evolution. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. So taste was a sense that aided us in testing what foods we were consuming it was therefore a matter of survival like back in the day when we were collecting like berries and stuff yeah so a bitter taste or uh, something that was a sour taste was an indication of poisonous or inedible plants or of rotting protein rich foods oh makes sense Mm -hmm. you You eat that that. like bad old meat that tastes terrible yeah it's like no 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 it's not but if it tasted sweet and salty you were often triggered as this is good food this good, is rich in the nutrients. good stuff yeah. yeah okay yeah i mean that makes sense so what's generally categorized as quote-unquote taste is basically a bundle of different sensations it is not only the qualities of taste perceived by the tongue but also the smell texture and temperature of the meal which are so important oh. i just went to a really nice dinner with michael we were celebrating our six months Seven months. Wow. We went to this uh, restaurant. It's called One White Street, and it's in New York. If you ever have the opportunity, go. It is the best flavored, textured, layered experience. What kind of food? It's like everything. So they have this farm, and whatever they can grow on the farm, whatever they have, whatever they can find and use, they do. And it was the first time that I feel like I was able to put together all these different things that we're talking about right. like the smell the texture the taste yeah and how layered it was and okay. like the purees that they would use with the carrots and it does often like i've eaten at a place similar like it was more like a fancier meal or sure. whatever yeah we'll call right? it a fancy, it's a fancy meal, meal. It's fancy. but that is that is like the big that's what they try and drive home is like yes. it's not just the taste it's the like the this texture was a seven course the, meal. yeah it's it's a whole <laughs> like experience it's yeah. not like Here's your food. Eat it. Enjoy. Yeah. It wasn't just like someone slammed down a burger in front of me. It was like, (laughs) eat because you're hungry. Eat food. But anyway, back on on point. Back on food (laughs) and taste. Yeah. So it's really important to have all those things. They call it the coloring uh, of a taste that happens through the nose. So you get this like aroma and the sense from the whole meal. Yeah. And it creates- It's all part of it. Yeah. This beautiful color. Yeah. That's the thing. Like there has been stuff that I've eaten- that you know it might taste okay but the texture is really weird and that just that ruins it or like 
you know, have you ever been in a restaurant where the food might be fine, but there's like a weird smell? Yes, it ruins it. Ruins everything. That's like when you go to a house yeah. that's for sale. If you're a realtor, you put cookies out oh, that are freshly it. baked because yeah. you're going to get that warm, fun cookie aroma yeah. that like makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Yeah. You know, like there's so many tricks with smell that it's important. Yeah, very important. It's crazy. But actually, when smell is impaired or your nose is impaired, the taste and the perception of taste is usually dulled as well. So it's not that only our taste buds that are important. It's yeah. actually the smell that we're experiencing. You need that smell. You have to have it. So with our nose, we have these olfactory receptors that are inside the uppermost part of the nose and contain special cells that help you smell. Then they send a message to the brain. So while you're chewing, the food is releasing these chemicals that immediately travel up into your nose. And these chemicals trigger the olfactory receptors inside the nose. Uh, Those olfactory receptors. Those olfactory receptors. (laughs) So that works together paired with your taste buds to create a true flavor of a yummy slice of pizza telling the brain that it's really good. Nice. So it's really interesting. I mean... Your nose is connected to it's all the back of your throat. Yeah. So it makes sense that those chemicals and that's where like the most of your taste buds and the cells it's in are. The back, yeah. Yeah. It is totally like they're they're completely linked, like we were just saying. Like mm-hmm. you, you can have a good meal, but if the smell is weird, it's it's ruined. So yeah. yeah, it's it's really cool. And it's uh totally a thing with like pizza. Like, oh yeah. I when when we were in California and we were walking down like a pier. And there was like a bunch of little, like it was kind of like a mm-hmm. boardwalks type thing with little shops and crap. And uh, walked past a, I think it was like a restaurant or yeah. like a tiny little thing. And just that smell of pizza hit me. And I immediately I was like, oh man, that's fine. I want pizza. We got to go. Yeah, I got to go. Some pizza. <laughs> like, I, I don't think it wasn't like a nice pizza, you know, whatever. It was just a crappy little pizza place. Sure. But it was just that smell hit me. And I was like, oh, pizza. I've yeah. I've got to have we some go. pizza. Um, yeah, so it's it's they're so linked and it's so important. What's one of your favorite smells besides pizza? Um, Do you have one that you're like, this is so good? Um, we got this is not even related, but <laughs> when me and my wife first got married, or I think it was around like maybe right before whatever, uh, we went to TJ Maxx. Mm-hmm to their candle section because they have a really oh, popping no. candle yeah. section. They really do. Yeah, you can get some sweet candles. Want to go test out your sense of smell? That's where you go. Yeah, we would do like date nights where we just went and some smelled candles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we got this candle. We both were like, oh, it smells so good. We got to get it. The name of it was Bachelor Pad. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, this is so ironic because we were like <laughs> living together, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so I peeled off the, or like scratched off the label That's of hilarious. it because it was called Bachelor Pad. Um, but it smelled super good. It smelled super good. I don't really remember. It was like cologne like, you know. I was going like, to say, like, was it like a sandalwood? Yeah, like sandalwood, or something like that, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I love the smell. Like there's nothing I love more than like the smell of fresh cut wood. Fresh, yeah. Like if you're using a oh, saw yeah. or something, like that smell really is good. just like yeah, so vibrant. Do you like sm- oh rain? Love the smell of rain. Oh yes, I love the smell of rain. Which that I don't remember the name. It has a fancy. It does. It name. starts with an A. Uh, it's not the smell of rain. It's the smell of everything getting wet mm-hmm. and mostly plants because they release so much a smell. Yeah, because um, they like open their pores yeah. to absorb all the and water. And that is that's the smell you are smelling. It's not the smell of rain water or yeah, whatever because water doesn't water have doesn't smell. have a smell yeah and it's or mostly, it shouldn't have a smell and it's mostly acidic rain that's falling out of the sky well, nowadays so you know there's that, that as well so taste and our sense of smell are so closely linked to our emotions like we just talked about with the cookies the pizza it invites you in you yeah. want things yeah. this is because both senses are connected to the involuntary nervous system Okay. So that's why a bad taste or odor can bring about vomiting or nausea. That was so aggressive. Why did we go yeah, straight to straight vomiting? Straight to vomiting. <laughs> so flavors that are appeasing increase the production of saliva and the gastric juices. The gastric which juices. Which makes them truly mouthwatering. Oh. Makes your digestive tract get all happy. Get it's the, like, the, I want it. All those gastric juices going. Okay, so we talked about how the brain can only perceive these five senses, but we just talked about how you can have a meal that takes you on a culinary experience. A whole journey. Yeah, so how can you combine all of these into something that makes it feel special? Yeah. 
I think I read online that there, how many flavors can be produced between the five? I feel like it's very similar to like colors. Yes. You know what I mean? Like you have your primary colors, but then you mix those and make these colors and then you mix those and make these colors and all of a sudden you have like a million colors Mm -hmm. um, when you only started out with like four. I can't remember how many it is, but this feels like one of those things where like the five, you put them all next to each other. Yeah. And it's like sweet, sour, salty, bitter, savory. And then you do it the same thing again, the same thing again, the same thing again. So you get all the crosses. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. If you're interested in that. Let you us kn- know. You know where to start. Do yeah. some research. <laughs> find out. But like I said, I, I do feel like it's it's similar to like colors, mixing colors to oh, get yeah. different colors. Mm-hmm. And then you can mix those colors to get different colors. And then all of a sudden you have all these random flavors of whatever. For sure. So let's go ahead and start with these home guys, these five. Yeah, to finish it up here at the end. The cause, five. Cause we, are, we are nearing the end here. Uh, we're going to dig deep into... Not the deep. Big five. We're going to just dig in a little bit on the five flavors, five tastes. So yeah, the five basics are sweet, sour, salty, bitter, savory, or umami. 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 Which we're gonna get into what that is in a minute. But okay. let's start with sweetness because we like to be sweet. Sweet. So let's talk about sweets. What is perceived as sweetness is usually caused by sugar and its derivatives such as fructose and lactose. But other types of substances can also activate the sensory cells that respond to sweetness. For example, some protein building blocks like amino acids and also alcohol in fruit juices or alcoholic drinks can taste sweet. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. With sour, it is mostly acidic solutions like lemon juice or organic acids that taste sour. This sensation is caused by hydrogen ions and they split off by an acid dissolved in a watery solution. Okay. Hydrogen ions. Make things sour. Wow. That's some new info. I had no idea that. I hi- did. Now you know hydrogen tastes sour. <laughs> hydrogen, hydrogen ions. You bite a lemon. Hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are splitting off in your mouth. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Just like that. Interesting. With salt. So foods containing table salt is mostly what we see as salty. Right. You know, sodium and chloride. Uh, yeah, that's what is salt. <laughs> Sodium and chloride. Yes. Make yeah. the salt. Makes the salt. So mineral salts like the salt of potassium or magnesium can also cause a sensation of saltiness. Right. So with bitter taste, it is brought by many fundamentally different substances. In total, there are about 35 different proteins in the sensory cells that respond to bitter substances. Interesting. 35. That's, I feel like bitter is a red flag for me. Things shouldn't be bitter. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think that's probably why there are so many sensory receptors for it. Yeah. So that it can warn you that you're putting something terrible in your body. Right. And that's what you have here. And we talked about it earlier about like evolution. That yeah. was like if you eat the bad plant, it tastes bitter because it's going to kill you. And it's poisonous. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it makes sense that there's so many receptors to catch that. And then savory, which is the umami taste, which I could be saying that completely wrong. I think that's right. Okay. Umami. Which is something similar to the taste of meat broth. It is usually caused by glutamic acid or aspartic acid. Sure. Those acids cause you to taste something that is umami or savory. Yeah. So these two amino acids are a part of many different proteins found in foods and also some plants. So ripe tomatoes, meat, and cheeses all contain a lot of glutamic acid. Tomatoes. Yeah. Weird. All right. That makes sense. They've always tasted savory. Yeah. They Things. don't because I can't ever put my finger on what it is because it's not salty. Yeah. It's not sweet. It's not bitter. Yeah. It, it's a savory. It's yeah. a savory flavor. I mean, I feel like a, a very clear is like they said, like meat broth. Yeah. Um, or isn't like MSG savory? Isn't that what it is? I have no idea. They use an example of asparagus here. For example, it contains aspartic acid. Makes sense. Chinese Uh cuisine uses glutamic. Chinese cuisine uses uh, glutamate. Yeah. That is MSG. That's what I was saying. Okay. Uh, Mono something glutamate. Sure. I think it might be sodium. Mono sodium glutamate or something like that. Okay. Um, So if you have ever heard about, if you've ever heard MSG, uh, and in association with Chinese cuisine, 
that is savory. Gotcha. Um, so if you're if you're looking for some savory example, Chinese food is is a very clear your go to. Yeah, it's a very clear thing because it has glutamate in it. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. interesting. So fun fact to tack on the end here: when people are talking about something being hot or spicy uh-huh. and referring, you know, using that as like a taste, um, that is not a taste. That is no. not qualified as a taste. Technically, it's just pain signals sent by the nerves that transmit touch and temperature sensations. Huh. The substance capsaicin in foods seasoned with chili uh, causes that sensation of pain or heat. So that spice isn't even a flavor. So spi- like hot, as somebody says, like That's hot. the flavor is hot or spicy. I yeah. think spicy is probably the more common one. Sure. Like, it tastes spicy. Uh, it's not actually taste. It's literally just pain. <laughs> it's literally your body it's being just, like, I'm in your, pain. Your body being like, what did you just do? <laughs> Please don't ever do that again. Don't eat those. Yeah. That was a terrible idea. Um, so that's interesting. It is super interesting. There's your fun dinner party fact. You can be that person that's like, actually, <laughs> spicy is not a taste. That's not going to be Maybe spicy. don't be that person because people don't like that person. They're going to throw a dinner roll at your head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was fun. We that learned was a, a ride. Lot. This was we learned a lot. There's this yeah. had a lot of like info about taste buds. A lot of taste buds. I kind of went in hard on this. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think it's okay. It's interesting. It is. There yeah. was just a lot going on on your tongue that I didn't realize was actually happening there. Yeah, I feel like that's everything in the body. Yeah, like people just take it for granted, and then when you dig in, you're like, oh my gosh, it does that. Yeah, I feel like I went in a deep, dark, black rabbit hole figuring yeah. this one out <laughs> of how of what happens when we put a piece of pizza in our mouth yes yeah literally that was the whole thing i was eating a nice. slice of new york pizza and sure. was like why do i like it You're like why is this good <laughs> what is happening here why do i want to eat more of it <laughs> and that would be why now you know now you know now you know what's happening next time you eat something yeah so if you're listening to this maybe your taste buds are like firing up my stomach is grumbling. My mouth is salivating right now telling me. Yeah, when we were talking about pizza. I know. I oh, was like, I feel like I need some pizza. Like I need to get some pizza right now. All right. Well, All right, well let's go well, eat yeah. some pizza. Should we go eat some pizza? I think we shall. All right. Well, if you enjoyed the podcast, drop a rating and review on Apple Podcasts because it really helps us out. And uh, Share this with your friends. Share this with your friends. Spout some sweet taste bud facts <laughs> and get them hooked on this podcast. Do it to it. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys next week. We're talking about cheetahs. Cheetahs. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. And their spots. Wow. We're coming back to an app or an animal oh, podcast. Oh, yeah. We've been, we took a long we break. We took a break from being an animal podcast. Yeah. But we're coming uh, back. Something for you guys to chew on. Is oh. a zebra black with white stripes or white with black stripes? That's a good question. Mm. We're going to find out next week. That's a really good week. question. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>